welcome Boom. to the monthly dive into the long box one shot. I am Gabe here with Ajax, and with us again is Drew in the studio. Where? <laughs> Last time, uh, if you guys haven't checked it out yet, we cast our own X Men movies. Fucking just blew it out the water. <laughs> it was so much fun. Uh, I think all of our movies uh, were top notch. I think they all were stellar, even the 90s one. I would want to watch every <laughs> single one of the movies we came up with. <laughs> I think we showed how easy it is to cast people for these movies, and when these movie places get it wrong, that's why it's so frustrating, because the people are out there. Just give them the money. <laughs> I will say the, the casting for my 90s one, the budget would have been fucking insane. <laughs> it would have been Just fucking to get insane. Arnold and Dolph? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Would have been... Uh, oh, you know, the budget's only $500 million. <laughs> <laughs> But we covered so much ground that we're actually going to be doing our wizard uh, issue at the end of this episode like we would have done in the issue. But, guys, we are reviewing two books here. They're, I did two because they're technically one story. They're not long. It is So this character, you may know as Fighting American, has gone from company to company. Has gone mm. from uh, awesome uh, Titan comics to uh, Atomic comics to... DC Comics to Awesome Entertainment, which is going to be the ones we're reviewing here. And I think one of the longest runs might have, if it's not Awesome Entertainment, it's definitely the original 1950s run, um, which was made in response to Captain America, which is <laughs> which... fitting because this Awesome Entertainment one is made in response to Heroes Reborn, Captain America, and there's something about yeah. America with a white background that's yeah. just... <laughs> Yeah. It just looks too good. It looks too good. So look at those feet. Both of these, <laughs> both of these. By the way, this cover is beautiful. Ed McGinnis cover for this one. Beautiful Ed McGinnis yeah. fairy cover there. Volk, um, Volk and then, season. And then the other cover here is by Liefeld. And look at some nicely drawn feet by Liefeld on this one. Yeah, very with nice. A beautiful American flag. Half of them are in the dark. <laughs> so this series is also made in response to Captain America. Because Liefeld was taken off of Captain America. He did a couple issues um, in this book. As you can see, it'll go from what you know from Liefeld like this. And literally the next issue is this big cartoony style. Mm -hmm. Which is definitely not Rob Liefeld. <laughs> it was uh, then given to Joe Bennett, who was doing pencils. So Liefeld was very unhappy about that. And he touches on that in this book here. So here, can I borrow this for two seconds? Yep. I'll let you look through the second one. While uh, we start reviewing this first one here. Yeah. We're looking through this book here, man, and Ajax. There's something interesting here. We'll get to it when we go through the story, but I wanted to touch on this right now. And as you know from all these books and their covers, Fighting American has a sidekick. This sidekick right here, mm -hmm. right? Spice is her name. Nice. Spice. But did you notice something, Ajax? And everything Ajax? nice. Spice. Spice looks a lot like <laughs> the other sidekick, from Captain America Heroes Reborn. Hmm. <laughs> Actually, they are almost identical. <laughs> they got the sneakers. They got the jean shorts. They got the gloves. They got the hair and the goggles. It is almost identical. And guess what? They also have the same sense of humor, and they're written the same way almost. Mm -hmm. But I got to give a big shout out to the back of this graphic novel here. Beautiful Jim Lee Captain America. Fucking awesome. Yeah, Jim Lee. Awesome Jim Lee. And correct me if I'm wrong, Gabe. Isn't the sidekick in Heroes Reborn actually like Bucky's daughter or granddaughter? Yes, like she is, Ricky yes. Barnes? Is yes. that her name? Yep, it is. Because in that book, he's trying to find himself out. He's trying to figure out who Captain America is. You know what I'm trying to figure out? How Rob Liefeld avoided lawsuits. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this gets interesting. You'll 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 see. Because so, the series is basically straight up Captain America, straight literally. up straight up Bucky Barnes, girl literally. as a girl, and they're fighting straight up the whole. My like. guess, my <laughs> guess is he hangs his hat on he created that Bucky Barnes. Yeah. And that type of Captain yeah. America, you'll notice it's very similar, is exactly what he wrote. So I'm guessing that's a little loophole there. Where it's like I created that, I could just redo it with a new skin, kind of a new skin. It looks just like Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> it does. So we start off this book here. And we start off this book, and it's there's comets falling from the sky, from space. And there's someone on a news channel talking to us. We're, we're brought over to Russia here. So instead of Germany, it's Russians. So we see this old man in the sun. They're, they're bringing, you know, I'm guessing it just looks like some sticks. 
They're bringing some sticks, some sticks yeah. to their house. <laughs> and then a big explosion happens. It hits their farm Superman style. My sticks! And instead of a <laughs> small Superman boy, there is a green alien with three fingers. <laughs> and the parents are like, oh, shit, what's going on? Son, go call the cops. I love how it's just straight up like <laughs> it's Red Skull. Like, By just, the way. No, erase all the swastikas. Put put the USSR <laughs> thing, and don't don't make him don't make his face red. Just put skin color. It's fine. It's fine. There is also something me and Ajax notice about this book. It is written by Rob Liefeld. Story by Rob Liefeld. Jeff Loeb. Um, Jeff Loeb also worked on this with him, well, and it's you. inspired by Eric Larson. Eric Larson, who has grown to fame from you know Spider Man, the Hulk, uh, Savage Dragon, many other things. So I was telling Ajax, he definitely just like brought the idea up. Like, oh, what if we made like a funny American book? And this happened, and Liefeld was like, I'm fucking taking that. I'm going to make money off of that. <laughs> no, it was straight, straight up Liefeld saying, remember that in that meeting for Captain America we were in? They're like, yeah. And they're like, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> but you don't own Cap- I'm going to do it again. But you don't own Captain America. <sighs> it's fine. <laughs> I could get the rights to fighting I, American. Yeah, I, just, I, just, I just make up a new guy. So I, can, I can call yeah. I can call up Jack Kirby's widow yeah. right now. Yeah. Hey, that, yeah. Oh, that's can cool. Can you sell me Finding American? Like, what is, what, what's his suit look like? Oh, you know, just red, white, and blue. He's going to have a cowl. <laughs> All right, cool. What's his weapon? I don't know. A shield? <laughs> so the kid calls the cops uh-huh. uh, because of <laughs> an alien fucking, ship these that falls. Russians burn my sticks. And they see the green alien head <laughs> sticking out. So they call the cops, and the Russian military shows up. Um, as they do. <laughs> and they're like, hey, thanks for calling about the incident. We appreciate it. In English. And they say, oh, don't worry about that. Just go away. It's an American spy plane. They're trying to they're trying to get inf- intel on us to kill us. So, you so it's are, propaganda. So you guys going to reimburse me for my sticks? Or uh, <laughs> am I just out of sticks? <laughs> First of all, I think they're like, it's an American spy ship. Yeah. But there's a fucking green alien hand. Oh, by the way, thanks for, thanks for calling me. Here's some super classified information. Also. Go away. Spoiler alert, <laughs> this green alien shows up never again in this book. <laughs> For the rest of this book, there's yeah. actually no alien talk at all. <laughs> so um, he tells the other person in the military, the, our, our big colonel here, Colonel, uh, his name is Colonel Kasanov, tells his, uh, his, sur- his soldier here, a sergeant, and he's like, handle this effortlessly. And he's like, yes, sir. And he goes, listen, we need everyone to move quickly off this farm. Anyone in this area? And I don't know where there's like 100 people on this farm. I don't know where. They just, 100 people just show up. And they round them up, and they're like, all right, we'll keep you safe in here. Well, yeah, people need their sticks. <laughs> they keep, <laughs> they, they put them in there, and guess what? No one's getting sticks because they Nobody line them up, sticks. and they fucking slaughter everyone because they saw what happened with the ship falling out from the sky. And they slaughter everyone. My favorite part is when I tell the old man to go away, but then, like, everybody else dies. Yeah. Like, who is this old man? <laughs> And their way of tricking them in is by saying there's radiation out here. We got to get you inside. The, the Americans are sending radiation with this ship to kill us. And they're like, oh, my God. So it was like a panic. And they just killed them. And then right here, I showed Ajax. Uh, there's actually just three pictures of London, Moscow, and Paris. Not even drawn. They're just pictures from, the from like, Google, I guess, at the time in 99. And they just blow them up. <laughs> and then they blow up. And they're like, there's the U.S. Army there. And they're like, please tell me we're watching a movie. Like, this is crazy. What just happened? And... They're like, oh, uh, yeah, there's a guy called, not the Red Skull, the Red Menace cool. is the reason this happened. The guy in this picture oh, is absolutely not General <laughs> Thaddeus Ross of uh, Marvel. 100% not him. Just a general with a mustache. And, and this, red, this Red Menace is casting this video to them. Yes. So they're seeing this live. We're just going to call and him General Mustache. <laughs> the military guy says, oh, God, we're going to need... A fighting American. Get Steve. Uh, uh, and there's a there's a guy. really cool scene here where it's fighting American on his farm. Yeah. A nice little farm boy. Which, uh, if I'm correct here, when they meet up with good old Steve Rogers <laughs> in this book, <laughs> you'll never guess where he is. Oh, yeah. He is working a nice little humble job off of his farm. <laughs> Just a nice American boy. By the way, look at Steve Rogers in this. Yep. Ajax, I'm going to show you. Steve Rogers. Yep. Let's look at John Flagg here. John Flagg looks mighty familiar, doesn't he? <laughs> Extremely. Couldn't even make John him a Flagg brunette, guys. Could not make him a brunette. Yeah, but at all. This scene Couldn't cool. give him a beard. <laughs> 
But this scene is cool because it's him walking around the farm and it's playing the song, Mama, Don't Let Your Babies Grow Up to Be Cowboys. And it's cool. So they're playing that song. So he's just doing some stuff on the farm and then we hear, Wuppa, 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 Wuppa. <laughs> <laughs> it's an aeroplane. <laughs> And it comes down. Imagine being in that creative meeting. What's the plane sound like? Helicopter. That's right. That's where I put it in. And they go, John? John Flagg, it's been a long time. And he basically says, fuck off. Because he says, it's it's not long enough. I'm you need to go away. Look at Steve Rogers and Thaddeus Ross. <laughs> and they say, wow, uh, you haven't heard the world's gone up in smoke. And he says, basically, I don't fucking care. I don't watch TV. I mind my business. I live on a farm. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Wuppa, 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 and he says, wuppa. "Oh, by the way, by the way, by the way, when that uh, explosion happened, let me make sure. Uh, okay, no, that is current time. I just want to make sure because yeah. they tell him, hey, you haven't aged a day." <laughs> and he's like, "Listen, it's the Iron Cross, John. We need your help. We need, we need Fighting American. Mm-hmm. And we get some awesome art here, by the way. I gotta great. say, this is great. Yeah, great fucking spread here. But I was telling Ajax, you could definitely tell." When it's not Liefeld drawing, because he drew this with Stephen Platt, a great artist. So you could tell this is Platt, and then you could tell it immediately goes right Liefeld? into Liefeld. Yeah. Uh, and then it goes from Liefeld, Liefeld, oh, wonky faces, yeah. right back to Platt. So yeah. you could tell. So we get a cool spread here. It's fighting American. Uh, back in the day, just beating up people in Russia, a bunch of Russian sh- soldiers. And it's just some cool fucking imagery, man. He is just... Saying what it's what it means to be a fighting patriot, and he's saying like you know, there's a cool line. Here. He goes, "When are you commies gonna learn?" It's like bowling, one ball right down the middle, and everything falls down. And he looks down the sight of a fucking giant cannon and goes, "Steer right," <laughs> and blows up the building. <laughs> fucking awesome. <laughs> and then he <laughs> says <laughs> after <laughs> after murdering and killing these people, you see their heads fly off. He says, yep. "Bowling, great fun, or don't they have fun here in Russia?" <laughs> <laughs> and then we just get images of him looking kind of evil. <laughs> yeah, straight up slaughter. Just slaughter. I will say it's done for a reason. We do yeah. get to it a little later on. <laughs> because he looks all evil, Ajax. He's lifting up this car. He's tossing it down onto these soldiers. And as he goes over to the soldier he killed, he realizes this is just a kid. He goes, he had a life and dreams and a girl he left behind. And he looks into the fiery abyss that he's caused because he was told to by the U.S. Army. And he says, when are we ever going to learn? So you can tell he's very anti-war. He doesn't like what he has to do, but he's a, he's a soldier for the army, and this is what he has to do. And then he killed the rest of those men. <laughs> <laughs> so now, wuppa, 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 it brings wuppa, us back wuppa, to wuppa, modern wuppa. time. We're, we're back home. <laughs> <laughs> and we see John Flagg now in costume, and they say, hey, it still fits. And he says, only the man inside has changed. You can tell he does not want to fight anymore, but it's kind of like America's called for him again, and he needs to. <laughs> so they say, listen, we got someone for you. And he's like, listen, after what happened, I work alone. And they go, not anymore, you do. We got you a new person. And her name is S-P-I-C-E. And he goes, Spice? And she calls him Pops. She goes, what's up, Pops? <laughs> he goes, Pops? <laughs> so we find out this is not a normal person. Real dialogue, by the way. Yeah, it is. This is Pops. not a normal person. Pops. She is not even a human. She is a cyborg. She goes, I'm just your basic state-of-the-art titanium alloy Pentium processor-driven weapon of mass destruction. With Converse. And then she looks at him <laughs> and goes, so what are you? And he goes, not amused. <laughs> <laughs> now you know for a fucking fact that Liefeld researched all those words. Yep. <laughs> and then we learn here he doesn't want a partner because he had a sidekick once. And his name was Speed Boy. Whoop-a, and he goes, listen, whoop-a, whoop-a. when we're out there in the field, you're going to stay back and let me do the work. And he says, I'm not going to lose. That's what it sounded like when Speed Boy was running. Wuppa, wuppa, wuppa. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, I'm not going to lose. And then they cut him off. And they go, right, we're, here at, we're here at Skull Island. You guys ready? And then he <laughs> says, listen, fucking don't get in my way, basically. He tells her to stay back. And after he goes, you're going to stay back, she goes, race you down. And she jumps out of the helicopter. <laughs> to, to a full page of what is only known, yes. or what I can see is straight up. Carrie is, Kelly, oh, and yes. right out of Batman to Dark Knight Returns. And if I'm correct, I have seen this exact pose yeah. with something very similar to it in this book. And Where Heroes is it? Reborn? It's, yes. There is a very similar spread here. Uh, where is it? Okay, this isn't him anymore. Uh, don't mind me. Well, I'm just looking through Heroes Reborn right now. Well, Spice is definitely spreading. There's no question. <laughs> 
Which is real weird because Spice is supposed to be 16 in this book, and it's really provocative, some of her poses. Yeah. I don't know what. <laughs> 90s were wild, man. And when you look at Spice, Spice is literally the character from. She's just the exact yeah. same character the from same this character. other book. Right. Like, I'm look like, it looks like I'm reading the same book. Her, Even the rockets yeah. that they're shooting off look exactly the same. It's as if one carrot, one, you know, when they hand off a title to another illustrator, he just has his own spin on it. Yep. Yep. Just, nah. Nah, we got it. But in this one, we got Cable, though. We didn't get Cable <laughs> in American, uh, American, Fighting American. Um, okay, no, I can't find she... the spread. There is a similar spread of her jumping, and it looks I mean, exactly the same, just flipped upside down. But you did get, like, a Purple Hulk in yeah. uh, Fighting American. Very true. So she goes, what's the matter, Pops? Afraid you can't keep up? And he basically just fucking ignores her. And he says, listen, that's what I told them. Only the men inside change. That's what I told them. After years of sitting out on the sidelines, letting others like Supreme and Glory take the front guard, and all in one moment, General Cole says the Iron Cross, and I answer the call. He's like disappointed in himself he that he would answered the call. Fucking name drop his own character. Yeah, he would do that. <laughs> so he's like, you could see he's disappointed because he feels like he has to fight this war because it's Iron Cross. And then again, we get two almost exact images you can find yeah. in Captain America of him attacking these bad guys. Don't get me wrong; they look good. They actually look better than they did in Captain America. Bro, um, what is it with these spread shots where everyone's crotch is to the camera? Like this? <laughs> what is it with that? Like spies loves that. And fucking fighting American? Like, Jesus Christ. And uh, so he's talking to himself, like, mentally, and he's like, I need to do this for my friend, for my partner. And then out loud he goes, speed boy. And Spice goes, nope, <laughs> but you'll come to admire me just the same. <laughs> and then we get the same image of her upside down shooting, which, again, is in Heroes Reborn at some point. Um, and she's shooting... Bullets from her fucking fingers. And then she extendo arms like she's Mr. Gadget. <laughs> and she does all this shit. She kills all of these dudes. And she says, that's how you do it in the 21st century. He's punching dudes and she just fucking shoots every single one with her fingers. <laughs> <laughs> kind of badass. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's actually A little corny. <laughs> A little corny, but kind of badass. And uh, he goes, Spice, we need to talk now. And she goes, it's okay. Uh, you're impressed the way I kick butt, right? And he goes, wrong. I'm not impressed. You're reckless, wild, and you don't listen. And she goes, listen, I got the job done. That's all that matters. Like, you need to relax. And uh, she's like, what, do you don't trust me? He goes, yeah, I don't know anything about you. And she goes, listen, I'm just trying to help you here. And then at the end, they get shot at. By the fucking Terminator. I mean... <laughs> the T-1000. It's legit. Yeah, it's true. I mean, Iron Cross. <laughs> and now, so there's this giant spread here at the end of this book, at the end of issue one. And you would think it's like a letters page. It is not. This is a giant shoot interview of Rob Liefeld talking about how pissed off he was at Marvel Comics. He says this. So what do Fighting America... Wait. He just called this Fighting America. The book is called Fighting American. <laughs> Not the end of the end. So, so what do Fighting American, Heroes Reborn, and Todd McFarlane have in common? <laughs> Aside from any connection I might have had with any of them in the past, present, or future, the answer is anger. Allow me to explain. And then he talks about how in Image Comics, Todd was always mad, and he ever, never understood why. And then he learns at the end that it was because of, like, he wanted to make some decisions. He couldn't, even though he owned Image. But he was mad because he had to follow a certain status quo to sell books. And that's basically what Marvel was putting in front of him. Like, you had to do your Captain America book a certain way. We're giving you reins to an extent. And he was pissed off about that. And he says it was to a point that they just were getting sick of him, and they kicked him off the book. And he was very pissed about that because he wanted to put all he could into it and bring it to the table, and Marvel didn't want it. So he said in response to that, he created Fighting American, where he's able to just fucking do everything he wanted to do in Captain America, but in this. Yeah, of course. <laughs> And I will say, reading this issue one, I like that. I listen. Heroes Reborn, I read it. Heroes Reborn was not as good as this issue one. This was I told Ajax. I described this as if Heroes Reborn, uh, if you took time. Oh, uh, awesome comic. Yeah, yeah. If you took your time with the Heroes Reborn Captain America, if you didn't have any chains holding him down or preventing him from doing stuff, that's what you would have had with this Fighting American book. So now we go into issue. Two. However, we also see. What happens when Rob Liefeld doesn't have the chains on him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, we're back here. Wubba, wubba, wubba. We're back here. <laughs> and this time, it shows that he is not a writer on this. He is just a story person, a story art. Or he created the story, yeah. but the, all the writing chops are going to Jeff Loeb. Um, Very good decision, by the way, Rob. 
And Very good decision. <laughs> we start off this issue looking at the giant Terminator that showed up last issue, you know, um, Iron Cross. And we see Spice and fighting American. But then we see this fucking, the Purple Hulk. Yeah. That's saying Smash, who was not in the last issue. No. Oh my God. Don't know where he came from. But, but why, why would you not just get Pit? Just call up Dale literally. Keown and be like, hey, brother, like, can we get Pit? Literally. Like, and hell? even even Spice says, I don't even ask about the purple dude. That <laughs> thing just appeared. <laughs> and he literally, all he says it's smash. is smash. <laughs> and he's a giant Hulk creature where the angrier he gets, the larger he gets. Um, so she's That's shooting so at easy. him. <laughs> she's shooting at him. And she's shooting at uh, Iron Cross also, who is just getting fucked up with all these uh, blasts. And uh, she's doing some little quips like Spider-Man, you know, being cool. And, by the way, she's shooting at these motherfuckers without talking with him because he gets pissed and yells Spice in a very angry manner. <laughs> he's not happy with her because she's reckless. Kind of All like caps. Batman and Robin in Dark Knight Returns. I also would like to know, she's a robot. It's not a habit to her. Yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> she build, should another, be fine. build another one. <laughs> like, Stop so, being so reckless. <laughs> <laughs> so now, fighting America. So basically now, uh, Captain America's fighting the Hulk. That's what we're getting here. Yeah, uh, yeah. We're getting fighting American versus Smash, his name is. And because that's all he says, and uh, he goes, "Not beast. Matter smash gets bigger. Smash gets." <laughs> and he goes, "My God, you speak!" And from dr- and judging from your New York accent, what did those commie rats do to you? <laughs> <laughs> so he throws American star ninja stars, which look cool with the blue background because it looks like the American flag. I was like, "That's pretty clever." Very well done. That's yeah. very clever. I like that. And it stabs him, and we find out those actually have like sleep tranquilizers in them. And he says, one will take down an elephant. So let's see what a dozen will do to you. <laughs> it's, Might kill him, but fuck it. It's, yeah. fucking, um, it's fucking Bradshaw shooting Big Show with the train killer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Spice does the coolest thing in the world. Not only does she have an extendo arm, and she goes, now, Cross, time to learn that you're not the only one with access to polymorphs. And she turns her arm into a fucking gun. Yeah, like a, a cannon gun. gun. Yeah, she goes full Super Patriot. Yeah. Full Super Patriot. <laughs> Yeah. Oh it goes from a big gun to a really big gun. Yeah. So then she shoots him, and he's like, "You're a fucking idiot." And she kicks him, and he's like, "She's like, what's going on?" He's like, "The alloy you're made out of, bitch. I'm made out of that too. We're made out of the same shit. It's like adamantium." He's like, "I'm made out of it too. Nothing will happen." So then she sh- butter, he- butter, butter, butter. Yeah, <laughs> he- yeah, <that's- laughs> butter, 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 butter. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he shoots her in the neck with his eyes, and then he disconnects his head, and then he starts flying away. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, man. And then the Hulk, I mean Smash, turns back. To it's a this, brute. I mean, <laughs> to this old man, and he's like, "What the hell's going on? Flag? Is that you? What year is this?" And he goes, "General Kurtz. It's 1997, sir. You've been missing for some time." But then again. So have I. And now we get a little flashback here to the 50s in the military. We see... Riding a missile. (laughs) By the way, doing the iconic fucking Rob Liefeld double spread sideways. He don't know. He does this. Open up Heroes Reborn. He does that shit there too. It's so hard to read. I don't know why he does this. And it's not the only time he does this shit. Listen, it reads very well. Like on a digital platform, not when you're not collecting physically. physically. But there is a cool little not at all. a page here with no words, and it's him riding the missile. Yeah, look at right there. It's another one. <laughs> like he of loves course. this shit, dude. So we get him riding the missile. By by the way, I don't know if you can notice this, but you see this right here of him riding this. Pause. <laughs> now we go to here. Oh, I, I mean, this is a reused right. image. They reuse it. I got one for you. Not only is it a sideways splash, oh but it's my panels. God. It's panels. <laughs> oh, my God. Sideways that's panels. So, that's so <laughs> awful. Why, why not just do a complete splash page at that point? <laughs> so this is actually a pretty cool scene because it's there's not a lot of words. As you can see, there's not a lot of words. It's him slaughtering Russian soldiers, and he says, it was always going to be one last mission. Like when they told us that the First World War was going to be the war to end all wars. But you didn't question orders or tried not to let the fear in the enemy's eyes get to you. You wore the flag, the American flag, and you got the job done. You can see there's some like internal conflict of there's a there's a lot of dialogue about war in this book. Oh, Just like, you out found like sideways. three more splash pages <laughs> since you've. Oh my god! But this is this is a big commentary basically on 
a soldier's mindset of the war. And if you look back, this is actually very <laughs> this is a very similar mindset that actually Super Patriot later had um, about the war as well. So it's kind of like a trend with these these image dudes comics. He just pulled out another one. But then we get this cool image here of American. Oh, that is very cool. Yeah, yeah. fighting American, holding the fucking torn up American flag in his hand, just like tattered and just destroyed. It's very cool. <laughs> And then we get a, a image here of him and Kurtz, General Kurtz, and we found out they're friends. And General Kurtz was going to match him up with a man called Major Blake Barron. And guess what we get, Drew? Another one! Another one! <laughs> <laughs> we get a double one with panels! Oh. With panels! And we find out this is Major Blake uh, Barron, also known as Batlin Barron from back in the day, um, who was in World War II. And we just, they meet, they become buddies, they become good friends. And Kurt says, you know, there's some other guys I want you to meet. And it's the Roaring Roughnecks. Not not the Howling Commandos, guys. Not <laughs> nope. yeah, the Howling not Commandos. Not the Commandos. By the way, Marvel definitely just made a Marvel Legend figure of this dude's fucking head. I'm going to tell you that right now. They yeah, that's made... Dump Dump Duggan. Like, <laughs> yeah, Mar yeah look, Marvel totally made toys from Marvel characters. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just him meeting the team, and he he realizes he found some brothers that day, some some good guys that he can stand by that see the war the same way he does. And they're just a cast of characters. Their names are uh, Shamrock, the General, Psycho, Deadeye, Hound Dog, and Grumpy. And he goes, because he goes, I'm, I'm grumpy like those dwarves. And he goes, well, I guess that makes me Snow White. <laughs> And then uh, Kurtz calls him. He goes, I don't know, Flag. You seem more like the Cinderella type. So they got some nice little fun banter. They're friends. They're cracking jokes with each other. And we cut back to today. And Spice is like, um, guys, you know that body that was just left on this little island that's very convenient so you don't have to draw a lot of grass and trees? Uh, yeah, everything on that body is set to explode. We have to go. So she flies away with them and the fucking island explodes. <laughs> so they fly off. And now we're back on the ship here. This is where it gets interesting. <laughs> so they go, incredible. So the Iron Cross's entire plan was to draw the fighting American out of retirement. All that destruction. And then Spice goes, well, everyone needs a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> so they're like, the Red Menace has to be behind this. They wanted me to come out of retirement. And guess what? They're getting it. So he goes, yeah, you had us worried there, John, our new military sergeant. He goes, I was ready to send in the allies. And guess who he has there? The fucking allies from Image Comics. He has Die Hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what the hell? And do you know who this is, Ajax? Do you know who this is? That's definitely not Thor. Not Thor. No. Not Thor. No, no. <laughs> it, it is Thor because Thor is public domain. Oh, that's right. This is fucking Thor. <laughs> but it looks just like Marvel Thor. Like, exactly yeah. like him. Yeah. And guess what? He's got a big fucking hammer like him, too. <laughs> no, wait, pause. Whoa, 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 pause. <laughs> no, what I meant. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But yeah, no, this is, I, I read this because he, he talks like, for two, long the Thunder God has now fought at thy side. This world doth need a fighting American. I was like, why is he talking like Thor? And then I Google it, and it is Thor. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> um, And yeah, so they're like, guys... I think it's time it's to like, kick some ass. It's, it's, almost, <laughs> it's almost like he did this before. And wait, Die Hard is a cyborg metal dude like Iron Man? Hmm. <laughs> What's happening? Hmm. So, Look at that. If you were to show that to anybody and not say what it was, they were like, oh, yeah, it's General Ross, Iron Man, Thor, and Captain America. So, yeah. so after all this happens, Spice says, well, obviously, Iron Cross is still out there. The Red Menace is still out there. She goes, let's go kick some butt. Don't you think so, F.A.? That's her little nickname for Fighting American. He goes, what do I think, Spice? I'm going home. The Iron Cross said it best. Times have changed. The world in which I gained fame is gone. You all can handle it from here because I quit. And he fucking leaves. <laughs> when the world is now in turmoil, he turns his back. And they say, say it ain't so, Flag. To find out what happens next, you must read Fighting American, Rules of the Game Number 1, completely drawn by Ed McGuinness. Which, and completely written by Jeff Loeb. Which is definitely one that I do want to read. So, I want to know what happens. That's I like, actually do want to know what happens. It's like, all what great, brings him back? But one thing they don't have is Bill Clinton and the creepy smile. <laughs> which, as you can see, that. Liefeld was kicked off the book at that point. Yeah. <laughs> 
So, oh, and just in case for you profit fans, they're advertising profit action figures from Awesome Toys. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. I like that. So, Fighting American 1 and 2. I said it already. This is as if he took his time with Captain America, and it's literally like this man has been out of the war. He's traumatized by the war. He lost his partner. He's killed innocent what innocent men who were kids that were forced to be in the war. He's he's traumatized. Mm-hmm. Now he's being brought back, and they're asking, "Do you want to do it again?" No, <laughs> yeah. no, I don't. So it's kind of logical. Like, yeah, no, I don't want to do this again. I'm over this. <laughs> so it makes sense that he quits. But I'm intrigued to see what it is that keeps him. Because, spoiler alert, he has two other uh, Fighting American series under Awesome Comics. So he obviously stays. And I'm, in- I'm actually interested to know why. I think that's serious. I quit. Come read more fi- <laughs> Fighting American. There's also a printing error on this. This is guaranteed, and you can't, read, full any- full you can't read any blah, 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 of the words. Uh, I don't know what's guaranteed in this, so... <laughs> So it says, point, this is just what they say here. A villain from the past has put a $10 million bounty on Fighting American's head. So I'm guessing that's his reason for coming back. Featuring an all-star Simon and Kirby cast. Poison Ivan. Hot Sky. Trotsky. Round Robin. And that's just the beginning. Who will survive? You must read Fighting American Rules of the Game. So someone's going to die. And I don't know who. <laughs> we just met all these characters. Hey, it doesn't matter who it is. Not going to have any connection. <laughs> so, I will say, this is actually not bad. We made a lot of jokes about it. It's, it's got wild. Some, it's got some cliches, but it's everything that's missing from modern day comics. It's off the wall shit. We got a yeah. fucking cyborg girl with a uh, an old military guy who seemingly doesn't age, maybe? Uh, who also fights a giant hulking creature that is partners with an evil cyborg, but a evil Russian is in charge of it, slaughtering civilians. It's so over the top, and but he- I like it. And Heroes Reborn <laughs> also gets into the wild craziness. Yeah. Captain America fights Galactus, guys. Yep, he does. And and they suit up Silver Surfer with guns. Yeah, and... A lot of guns. Shockingly, <laughs> that wasn't even Liefeld doing that. No, that this was is someone after else. he left. This is after he left. <laughs> so yeah that was Fighting American 1 and 2 Ajax what did you think from that synopsis that we brought to the table here for Fighting American a lot more fun than Heroes Reborn I'll tell you that <laughs> <laughs> and I gotta say Ajax compared to so Saga of Doom Universe was very slow building building a universe with a with an ending um, that um, took a long time to get to this was very Boom, 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 boom. Everything's happening. Action, action, action. So it's very opposite of what we reviewed on the show. Um, and I, I think it was a, it was a nice little change, a nice little palate cleanser. It, it was. And like I told you, like it's not that Saga of a Doom universe was bad. It was mm-hmm. good. It was just a dry read sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. There was just something, just not a lot of moving parts. And guess what? This wasn't. Every page was a moving part. There was actually yeah. so many parts on this moving machine that it wouldn't stop. <laughs> mm. They tried to cram six issues worth of things in two issues, and I guess they did. There's also a winter special I don't have, which actually has Thor fighting with them um, in Die Hard. So I have to try to get my hands on that holiday issue. Again, no cease and desist? Nope. Like, yeah. Thor's public domain. You can put Thor in. I'm talking about the entire series. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So my God, um, I can't load up a picture that I draw without. <laughs> ah! It looks too similar. What are we doing here? <laughs> so uh, to end off the show here, usually we save this for the issue, but we ran out of time on the issue. So we'll just go through this. This is from Wizard this month in Wizard, June 2000. Batman. I was a crisp three years old. We're looking at Wizard ranking the top 10 biggest creators of the comic book world. So. We're going to look at number 10 here. i got to share this with Ajax also. Coming in at number 10 is actually someone we talked about on the issue. Uh, Two men that made a bunch of different books and worked together. Number 10 is Eastman and Laird, Ajax. That's a good start. (laughs) It is. That's a very good start. (laughs) So yeah, let's share this with you here. Top 10 Eastman and Laird, who to this day have one of the most selling, as we learned on the last issue, one of the highest selling comic books. It's the number one book of the month um, with their Ninja Turtle characters that it's still sending to you, it says. Uh, <laughs> but um, So they're still, they're still very popular, very known. 
um, household names for everything that they've created. So that's an that's an easy top ten list even in twenty twenty four. Yeah, going on easily. to number nine here, we got another person that's in a top ten no matter what. Neil Adams. Yeah. Neil Adams, uh, who is uh, an iconic, iconic person, you know, worked on uh, Green Arrow. Uh, is Neil Adams? Let me also check. I did note something here. Neil, Neil Adams, Adams did pass away. Yeah, I was checking. He did, he did pass I think away it was last year, year before. 2022. Recently, he did pass away. Yeah. Neil Adams, is, his Batman is iconic. Yep. The flowing cape when he's running. Oh, that's what I think traditional Batman, I think Neil Adams. Neil Adams. That yep. blue with the gray mm-hmm. and the yeah, with the black and the mixing in there. And he even says here is claim the fame, Green Arrow and X Men at this time in two thousand. Yeah, Neil Adams, I believe, drew the uh uh Green Arrow, your sidekick is a heroin addict. Oh, that was Neil? <laughs> I believe yeah. so. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> he also did the horrible, horrible skate man. Just awful. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, the, one of the terrible. most famous Justice League posters is, I believe, a Neil Adams poster. Oh, here, I'll have you. I can have you hold this and look through it. Oh, okay. You have a visual. Um, I got them here digitally. Number eight here on this list is someone that, if you've never read one of his books, you've heard of him from the award show, Will Eisner, mm-hmm. the man behind the Eisner Award Show. Uh, there's actually people on this list that are multi-time Eisner Award-winning writers and artists, or writers, sorry, um that have gone on to become household names and legends in the comic book industry. But it all started with this man, Will Eisner. I mean, let's let's face it. Who's more inf- influential than the Spirit? <laughs> Literally. Yeah. He got a live-action movie. A lot it may of not be great, taken, but he got a live-action yeah, movie. A lot of characters have taken bits and pieces from the Spirit. Yeah. So they even say here he's the Thomas Edison of comics. And you know what? Can't argue with that. Yeah. He is... If it's not Stan Lee, it's Will Eisner. He is the man. Um, also up there with like Kirby. Those are definitely like those are three people on the Mount Rushmore of like all timers. And an, an absolute machine, man. Like he would draw his comics and he would write them. He yep. did both. And just insane, dude. By the way, a little side boob there too from Eisner. Pandering mm. to the to the to the boys out there. <laughs> and by, by the way, full boob from the spirit in this issue. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, also the girl. <laughs> <laughs> Next one coming in at number seven is another team effort here. Bob Kane, well, and Bill Finger. If it was up well, to Bob, but, it would not be a team it effort. It would just be I Bob was Kane. Say, this, this was a little controversial. <laughs> Had to a fight for this one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they're on this list for the fact that they are both, whether Bob Kane wants to admit it or not, they are co creators yeah. of Batman. One of the most popular superheroes of all time. I would say either on the same level. Of Superman and Spider Man. Let's just Everyone say this. knows who Batman. Even if you don't read comic books, you know Batman and Gotham City. You know what those things are. Yep. If it wasn't for Bill Finger, Batman would have been canceled after the first year. Yep. Yep. The end. Yeah. It's just great team creation, but Bob Kane uh, tried to take all the credit for himself for years. <laughs> for many, many years. <laughs> Bill Finger died. Before he got the credit. Literally. <laughs> yeah, like, that's crazy, dude. That's ridiculous. Number six on this list is a man that is, to this day, still drawing not only covers, but internal, or internals, but <laughs> drawing um, <laughs> interiors Interior. of comic books. Alex Ross, one of the craziest yeah, artists mean, of all time, one of the best artists of all time. Hands down. Um, I actually met someone talking about comics, and... The first thing they said was, yeah, on my coffee table, I have an Alex Ross art book. And I got so fucking jealous. Because they were like, I don't read modern stuff, but I have my Alex Ross book on my coffee table. And I just flip through it in the morning. And I'm like, that's so cool. Because I would do the same shit. (laughs) Great way to start your day. (laughs) It's a great way to start your day. Um, To this day, one of the most realistic artists of all time, working on Fantastic Four. Actually breathed a whole new life into Fantastic Four with his run recently. Um... And I think, like, any of his art is iconic. And actually, Ajax, it's this issue of Wizard. I believe it's this issue. They're advertising... Can I see it real quick? They are advertising um, an Alex Ross item in this book that I think would pop you. Don't tell me it's when he was doing Supreme. Brother, they are advertising the Supreme figure we didn't even know existed. Remember the oh one that we saw where, like, that was real? Yeah, Wizard we Magazine. crazy for that. Dude, Wizard Magazine. I think it's this issue. They were promoting it. By the way, Joe Mad Art in this too, Gakito Art, great game. Oh, we played it so on stream. Sick. If you guys want to check that out, we did play that on Twitch, and it is on our uh, Twitch channel. You guys can go check that out. Um, shit, I can't find it. Uh, what page is this on? It's gonna be on one hundred four. Speed. Oh shit, fuck. <laughs> Speed flipping out live on the podcast. There it is. 
They're advertising it. Oh, shit, fuck. There it is. That's, oh, that's so sick. I love They're it. They're advertising it. Alex Ross drawn Supreme. Um, so, yeah, Alex Ross, even at this time, just... Because that, that statue it? is the uh, the cover for the first Alan Moore Supreme um, issue. Yep. Which is still, to this day, probably one of my favorite covers of all time. I love that cover so much. And if we're talking about Alan people, you mentioned Alan Moore, another iconic person who's number five on this list. Controversial man. Very controversial man. Mr. Frank Miller. The man who created Dark Knight Returns. All-Star Batman. <laughs> and Holy Terror. I'm the motherfucking Batman. <laughs> and Holy Terror. Okay, Holy Terror is a book I've been trying to find because I've been wanting to read it. Just because. No, it's Just terrible. because. And I've also been trying to hunt down uh, Dark Knight 3. Or no, DK. Is it Dark DK2 or DK3? Which is the one? I think it's DK2, right? The one with the crazy art. Uh, two. Two, right? Yeah. But you're also hunting, trying to hunt that down. Yeah. Because I was like, all right, I have Batman Year One. I have Dark Knight Returns. Those are in the same universe. Yeah. I need all the Dark Knight runs by him. And I I just want I want Holy Terror just because. <laughs> oh, that 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 Dark Knight too is It's bad. It's bad. It's yeah. But it's, I want it. It sucks because you can see uh Frank's There's starting to lose it here. Yeah. yeah. But also Frank Miller known for creating Sin City, one yeah. of the most iconic series. I have the entire collection over there um of Sin City. And um, there's actually, we mentioned the compact comics on our issue. That's not the first time that's been done. With the Sin City DVD I have over there, there's a compact version of Sin City 1, the first book, hmm. in its entirety, the size of a DVD, which is pretty cool. Um, that came exclusively with the with the DVD pack. So, shout out Frank Miller. Um, yeah. <laughs> he's controversial, but, you know, when he's at the top of his game, he gets the job done. He's simultaneously one of my favorite creators of all time and oh, really? least favorite yeah. creators of all time, <laughs> depending on which, which frame we're getting. Yeah. Uh, number four, Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, the creators of Superman. I mean, of course, that explains itself there. Talk about not getting very, credit. I was gonna say, very sad that those guys never got the proper due that they got for Korean and Superman. Just and very I'm sad. Very happy they did here in this Wizard issue to get some sort of credit for themselves. Um, now we're getting close to this list here. And on this page that I'm about to say, they do have some honorable mentions. But Ajax, before we get to that, number uh, number three on this list, Alan Moore. <laughs> As you were just talking about him, Alan Moore is number three on this list. Swamp Thing. Yeah, Watchmen, Swamp Thing. Like Alan Moore is just out of this world. He has such a huge library of books. Um, a lot of them brought to live action as well. Like He is... Cross, I believe he has actual books too. He has crossed over the medium multiple times. Um, one of the best. He's one of the best. And constantly blames himself for the '90s extreme comics period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, He's like, I I should have never put out Watchmen. I should yeah. have never put it out. And you know who else has that same mindset too? Is Frank Miller when he was working on? Um, they actually he talks about when he was working on Dark Knight Two, that like. The reason why he made it so goofy, he talked about it. He made it so goofy because he set the tone of what comics were, and he didn't like it. Mm -hmm. He didn't Dark. like that everyone was trying to just do Batman. Yeah. So he said it, his that book was basically when he talks about it, it's basically a big middle finger to the comic scene, which we got that. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. I, can, we, I understand. We, we hear you, Frank. Thing. Yeah. So we, we that's what that was. It was like a message. Shit on your book. <laughs> but then at the end, it like takes a turn because nine eleven happens, and then the book gets real serious. And, like, he starts taking it seriously. And you get, like, from what I've read online of it, like, you get hints of it, of where, like, oh, maybe he does still have, like, the storytelling down. Because there are some good lines that I've seen from some pages. And it's like, all right, maybe he still has it towards the end. But then he just fucking he just throws it away. So, <laughs> but they're, like, it, it's like if he tried, he would have done well. But Alan Moore is a man that always tries, always puts out some great stuff. Um, and number two on this list, an icon in his own, Jack Kirby. It's the king of Marvel. King of Marvel. Uh, I don't care what anyone says. This man should have been given the world. Um, Another I'm glad he's finally that, getting credit. That should have gotten more credit while he was alive. Yep. Yeah. While yep. he was alive, should Stanley have gotten more credit. Did kind of screw him over when he was alive. Um, actually, very much screwed him over when he was alive, I, taking mm -hmm. full credit for all this stuff. I don't like talking ill of the dead, but Stanley completely fucked over Jack Kirby. He did. There's he no did. other way around it. So, I want to take a quick look before we get to number one on this list. We're going to look at who's destined for greatness in the year 2000 and kind of what they've done since. So, yeah. number one on this, Kurt Busiek is on this list as a 
person that's destined for greatness. Kurt Busick went out to do, I, I pulled up some of his bibliography here, just an insane amount of books. I, too much to even explain. He worked Quality on a bunch work. of, yeah, a bunch All of Astro work. City books he worked on. Um, I worked on some Army of Darkness stuff, worked on action comics for a very long time, um, worked on JLA, a bunch of stuff. He did 12 issues of Wednesday Comics, one through 52 of Trinity, the Trinity mm-hmm. book from 2008 to 2009. That's a good book, too. Yeah, and like even in his like awards, it's just they can't even list them. They just have to put it in a paragraph because there's so much to say. He won and one so of my many favorite, Eisners. One of my favorite team up book runs of all time, Thunderbolts. Yep, and it says it, here it too. Was, it was awesome. He won best finite series with Marvels. He then went on to win three Eisners in a row every <laughs> year from 1996 to 1998 because of Astro City alone. Just because of Astro City. That's a book that I really want to read, but I haven't read yet. But I've heard it's so good. And then he won another Eisner <laughs> for Best Continuing Series. And then Best Serialized Story. He's just racking up Eisners on top of Eisners. The next person on this list yeah. is a man you might know. Garth Ennis. Yes. What has Garth Ennis done? Oh. Uh, <laughs> mm, uh, this man mm. created a character with an ass on his face. <laughs> Arse face, yeah. Yeah, I Garth Ennis. I met Garth Ennis. I have uh, this is the one person on this list that I have met. Um, he was very tired of signing the boys' comics, but I brought mine for him to sign. <laughs> yeah. uh, because if you're gonna meet Garth Ennis, you're having him sign either Preacher or you're having him sign the boys. And I had him sign or, the boys or Punisher, um, or Punisher, or Punisher. But this man, after 2000, he then the next year after that won the National Comics Award for Best Supporting Character from Hitman, which is another series we need to review. Um, which takes Absolutely. place in Batman's universe, and it's just a, a hitman. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's basically boys before the boys. Like that's the guy reminds me of Butcher almost like visually. He has like the long trench coat, the black hair. Um, and then in 2021, he won Irish Comics News Award for Best Irish Writer. So good for him. And then he had tons of nominations. He had two Eisner nominations for Best Writer for Preacher. He got Best Serialized Story nomination for uh, 2001. Comics Buyers got award for favorite uh, writer nomination. Um, a bunch of stuff. He's been nominated and had live action adaptions of multi- multiple things. I will say I would like to see Hitman get made into an animated movie by DC. Yeah, that'd be a I lot agree. of fun. That'd be a lot of fun. And, so, and I was really hoping that um, that preacher adaptation would end up being a lot better than it was. Yeah. Because it's, it's a fucking great comic. And if there is any indication about his impact, not only in comics, but pop culture... Bro, he made The Boys, which yeah. is one of the most popular television series on streaming services today. And um, you know what's crazy? He wrote for John Constantine, too. And Con- yeah, John Constantine and Preacher was a phenomenal yeah. show that mm-hmm. a lot of people watched that didn't even read comics. The comic itself, not extremely popular when it came out, was actually on the verge of being canceled while it was at Wildstorm. Yeah. And then he had to change publishers. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Next on this list here, we got Grant Morrison. Yeah. Another person has worked on crazy amount of things, did a lot of stuff for DC, wrote one of my favorite DC stories, JLA Earth 2, which did huge, get adapted into a live or into a cartoon movie. Huge fan um, of Grant Flash. Yeah. So much stuff. Uh Batman Black and White. Like I pulled up his bibli- I like pulling up the bibliographies to look through it, but there's just so much that he's done. Like that was just his DC stuff. And like you go up, it's just countless countless things that he's worked on both independent and look his his fucking his uh his um wikipedia has an its own wikipedia just for his books because yeah. everybody else it's on their page he has not enough room <laughs> he's just he's written so much stuff and another person that has so much stuff made into live action um stuff that you wouldn't even think of that was done by him he, was done by him he has in my opinion the definitive run on doom patrol and it's great. If I'm correct, if you haven't checked out any Grant Morrison stuff, which book did it say it in? I believe Wonder Woman Earth One is yep, getting a compact edition. It is. So if you yep. haven't read Grant Morrison, mm-hmm. you can. Or if you haven't read Alan Moore, you can. They're making their uh, compact editions for people Grant, to check out. Grant Morrison has a fantastic interview on uh, Fat Man on Batman with Kevin Smith. Too. Does he? It's worth checking out. Oh, on interesting. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, next on this list is another man that has owned Marvel. Anytime Marvel gives him a character, he fucking knocks it out the park. J. Michael Straczynski. Um, yes. His Spider-Man run, amazing. Uh, he worked on doing a... Uh, oh, what's this Straczynski? 
did he work on Captain? No, it wasn't Captain America. Um, he did work. Yes, I he know. Did. Was it Captain he America? Captain he worked America. on. Okay, yeah. yeah just okay, recently, I'm not crazy. actually. Yeah. I was gonna say because that's the one I just read because he wrote Spider Man mm. in that so well. Where like Captain America's like taking everything. He's like, I got a date tonight. Well, and well, Spider Man's I mean, like, he did write. He did write Spider Man like twenty years ago. So. That's what I was gonna say. His like one page of having Spider Man in his book is better than any modern Spider Man run. That's not Ultimate Spider Man. Um, yeah. He did also work on before Watchmen. Um, so there's a couple of Watchmen yeah. stuff. Rising Stars. <laughs> yeah. Rising Stars. I actually have a Rising Stars figure right there mm-hmm. of Patriot. Rising <laughs> Stars is, I think, one of Are the most interesting concepts I've ever seen for a superhero book. It's just yeah. a very interesting concept. And I do have Patriot here. I guess I just like my U.S. Yeah. Uh, characters because I got a Patriot Toy Fair exclusive here of him unmasked. <laughs> so... Yeah, look, and then I got Freedom Force. Freedom Force. <laughs> Freedom Force. I think I just oh, yeah. like American yeah. characters. I'm shocked I haven't wrote one into my books yet. America. I guess I'm gonna now. I'm gonna I'm gonna just make yeah, a Captain America. Yeah, but you, Amer- you wrote a Canadian America. one instead. Imagine. <laughs> <laughs> well, J. Michael Straczynski hasn't only just won tons of awards, as you can see: Hugo Awards, BAFTA Awards, GLAAD Awards, Eisner Awards. He's also wrote screenplays yeah. for movies like Underworld, World War Z, Thor. Um, Babylon Five. He's also worked on TV shows. He Man's Masters of the Universe. Uh, I was Twilight gonna say, Zone. You could, you could just say Babylon Shira. Five because that won a mm-hmm. ton of awards. Oh, he did Sense Eight too. Yep, Sense Eight Two. Uh, Murder She Wrote. Walker Texas Ranger. Like he has crossed the medium from comics to TV, TV movies, everything. So he is just another person that since two thousand and even before two thousand, like he was top of his game. Um, and he just got better over the years. And the last one here, Greg Rucka here, was another one that actually was interesting to me when I was looking through his stuff. Another multi-Eisner award-winning person, but he actually did take over for some series, and he, the people before him were some big names. <laughs> yeah. When he took over Holy Detective shit. Comics in the year 1999, he took over for Chuck Dixon. Yeah. When he wrote for Elektra immediately after that, immediately after Batman hold on, hold on. He took over for Chuck, Chuck Dixon, and then who came in after him? Ed, Ed Brubaker. Brubaker. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and then that Crazy. went until 2002. From 2002 till 2003, he oh took over God. for Brian Michael, Michael Bendis, Bendis to write Electra. <laughs> oh. Then in 2003, he took over for Daniel Way writing Wolverine. And who until came in after him? Mark Millar. Mark Millar took that over after. <laughs> then he just jumped on. By the way, while he was writing Wolverine, he took over for Walt Wonder- Simonson writing for Wonder, Wonder Woman, Woman consecutively with Wolverine. Um, then Alan Heinberg took over. Joe Casey was writing Adventures of Superman, which he took over, which then the series ended after that. Um, Paul Cooperberg wrote for Checkmate. He took over it for two oh years. Oh, my God, the next one. And then Action Bruce Jones. Comics, re- preceded by Jeff Johns. Yes, Jeff Johns <laughs> in 2009 gave the reins to Greg Rucka to write Action Comics. And then that same year, he took over dire- Detective Comics from, from Paul, Paul Dini. Dini. <laughs> And then that went to David Hine after. Then he went out to write for The Punisher. Warzone, which Take, is one of my well, favorite. First it was regular oh, Punisher. Right, yeah. He took her for Rick uh, Remender. And then it went to Nathan Edmondson. And then <laughs> immediately after, he's like, all right, I'm done writing Punisher. I'm going to go write Warzone. Thanks, Garth. I'm going to take over for you. Another Garth person, Ennis. Another person in this list. Yeah. <laughs> and yep. he wrote Warzone. Um, and then after that, finally, he took over for Meredith Finch to write Wonder Woman. And it went to Sheriff Fontana. Um, but as you can see. It went from one great writer to another one. Yeah. Um, gonna, so you know what that shows? He's he's the glue guy. Yeah. Like yeah. you can just put him anywhere. Yeah. And yeah. It sticks. And he's writing for multiple series and companies mm-hmm. while he's writing Wolverine. At the same time. He's writing Wonder Woman at the same time and Adventures of Superman. And then immediately after that, he's on the checkmate. Yeah, he's doing action comments and detective. Oh, pretty much. At oh, okay, the same no, time. Yeah. At the same, same time, time. There at DC. And then he goes back to back with Punisher. Then he goes to Marvel. Yeah. yeah. And while he's writing. Um, Oh, and no, yeah. So yeah, it is back to back. God damn, like he was he was working, man. From basically from 1999 until 2013, he was working basically every year. Yeah. I think the only year he wasn't no look every year he was working until 2013, from 1999. That is insane. I actually read his uh, creator owned book at Image called Black Magic. I like. Oh, did actually. he write Black Magic? He did. Yeah. Oh, look at this. He won. Oh, and of course, those years he's writing, he won he Eisner's. Eisner. And yeah. the thing is, he's writing for best winning for best writer. For independent books. So while he's writing all this other stuff, he's writing for books like Whiteout. Like, he's like he's not only just doing Marvel. These are just Marvel and DC titles. Like, he's doing independent stuff, too, at the same time. Crazy. Lazarus, Stumptown, like, crazy. And he wrote for 52! 
which was the weekly DC series. Oh, yeah. So he was putting in the work. Well, to cap off this list here at number one, what do you guys think it is? Stan the Man, got to be, right? It's Stan the Man. Stan Lee. Of course. Coming in at number one. Um, the greatest mind in comics. Um, made everything that you love with with Jack, Jack Kirby. Kirby. With Jack Kirby. <laughs> but he is the man, the brain behind Marvel Comics in general, bringing it to life. Um, oh, speaking of, you know, I'm surprised Steve Ditko didn't make the list. Yes. That is very interesting, actually. I'm very shocked about that. Yeah. There's actually a couple people I'm shocked didn't make the list. But you also got to look at who's on this and realize, like, that's good that there's so mm. many iconic writers that they could yeah, have put on is. this list that they weren't able to. Yeah. So that is that is very good. People um, always think Stan Lee, but they have to remember there's a reason why uh, Jack Kirby's drawings are under Stan Lee's pictures. Literally. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know, he came up with the names and the ideas. Great. So what do you got? Here's Spider-Man. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, shit. You got it, Jack. <laughs> Well, I, I was gonna just give him six arms. Chill out, Stan. <laughs> this is Spider Man. Well, thank you guys for listening to the past two episodes of the Multi Dive into the Long Box. We talked so much about stuff. We had we packed basically three episodes. We did what what Liefeld did. We packed six episodes into two. We did a lot in these two episodes. And just remember, every day when you wake up and you're on your way to work, just as you're traveling to that location, just keep it in your mind. When you're watching John Wick and he shoots a gun, if it doesn't go, well, next month on our issue, issue number 17 of the monthly Diamond to the Long Box, we are going to be talking about, drum roll, please. We're going to be talking about, wait, drum roll, the top 10 comics of all time. That's a nice Superman right there. Allegedly by Screen Rant. I love looking at Screen Rant and Comic Book Online. Like I love seeing those people with the list to come up with. Because sometimes they introduce lists and characters I haven't really seen before. So we're going to be looking at Screen Rant's top 10 comics of all time as well as creating our uh, some ideas for future compact editions of DC books. And in our one shot, we're going to go from this two-issue crazy everything happening to an even more tamer book here with... A one issue, The Adventures of the X-Men, number nine, starring Gambit. There's a little bit of a bias here. <laughs> Keeping the X-Men theme going. It's a story about him in Jubilee, as he's training Jubilee. And it, each issue of The Adventures into the X-Men was an individual story. And this one's about Gambit. Um, I picked this up for a dollar in a dollar bin. Flipped through it. The art inside looks like this. This is a picture from inside the book. Um... And it's a really good book. It's a very cool cartoony style book. There is some. It kind of looks like Bruce Timm's art on the inside. It's a, it's a very, I would say, early to mid two thousands art. Yeah, and even if I pull this up here, the Adventures of the X Men number nine, and then this. If you look at this, oh, that's a different. The Adventures of the X Men. <laughs> I didn't know there was multiple. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Yeah. Sorry, number... Is this number eight? Did I get the number wrong? Oh, yeah, sorry. It's number eight, not number nine. <laughs> so there's a very weird <laughs> image here of Jubilee. Let me show this here to Ajax. That uh, is very interesting. <laughs> For some reason, this is the opening panel of the book. Um, of Jubilee being like, hey, Gambit, look at how I can throw my stuff. <laughs> not like, impressed. Oh yeah. Not impressed. But as you can see, it kind of has that Bruce Tim style approach, yeah. like how like the arms look and all that. Um. But it's a cool little book. Like it's there's some cool imagery in this. It's very cartoony. So I thought, why not? Really, like he's I swiping like a thing from Storm's hand. So straight up, hey shit, I could touch you. I'm not interested. Yeah. <laughs> and look, he sees his brother. So this will be a fun. Brother. It's a fun little gambit story. So we're gonna go through that next month. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. I look forward to it. Thank you, Drew, for being on these two episodes. Yes. Though we appreciate it. Thank you very it. much, Drew. Wubba, wubba, wubba. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you guys on the next issue. <laughs> 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 <laughs>